Before we get sort of flying stuck into this, it would be worth reminding yourself about this word functions. We are talking about the role or what it does. So look, it's kind of, we know what this skeleton thing is. We kind of used to the idea, but what does it do? Okay, what's its function? What's its role? That's what we're going to look to address here. And I'm going to start over here in, with the help of these images in a moment. And I'm going to talk to you about the notion of support. Okay, now, it's, again, a word we'll be familiar with, obviously, but the skeleton is solid. It is tough. It is what we, I'm going to put a little asterisk by this. It is rigid. Okay, in other words, it has got a hard structural shape to it. Okay, and I'm actually going to put that it has an upright posture, this kind of human upright bipedal walking posture. Okay, now, I've put an asterisk by rigid simply because long bones have what we refer to as tensile strength they are capable of slightly bending so just be aware of that it's not important for today but i just wanted to mention that in case you come ac across that idea in future studies but this support it's solid it's rigid it provides us this upright walking posture in fact guys i can show you the upright walking posture okay albeit by a skeleton here it is this is what we would refer to as human posture okay this bipedal upright posture and of course it informs what it informs are you there but Lee or not it informs lots well all human movement and sporting techniques now let's go back to here what's our second function well I'd like to intro introduce you guys to the notion of protection and again I don't think this will shock you but see if we can add some detail to this and again it relates to being solid and rigid but this protection point what are we talking about the role of the skeleton or one of them's one of them is to enclose and protect enclose and protect what do we mean by that yes you're probably thinking about the cranium yes you're probably thinking about the ribs more of which in a second but what about a vertebra here's what we've got here we've got a vertebra okay a vertebra what about this opening here do you know what travels through there in multiple vertebrae? Well, yeah, we've got the spinal cord, and that is protected by this tough, robust structure. It is protected. It mustn't get damaged. It does, of course, get damaged in things like uh, uh, motor vehicle accidents and things like that, but it's quite rare in the main. Now, we also looking for the skeleton to protect soft tissues okay so i've talked about the spinal cord well what about the brain that could end up rattling about inside this cranium if we're be if we're if we're hit with a hard rugby tackle or we fall from a horse in a question or something like that well yes the cranium protects that soft tissue or here the ribs and the sternum protect the soft tissue of the chest the thoracic cavity that those are useful examples in fact let's put a couple of those examples in let's put in cranium and what did I just say? Let's put in uh, let's put in things like the ribs, and we could talk about the sternum. These are nice examples. There's lots of others. You talk about the vertebrae for the spinal cord. You could talk about the pelvis for um, uh, the soft tissues in the abdomen, even to an extent uh, the reproductive organs. These are there to be protected by the skeletal structure. Now we are sports scientists, and we are in interested in movement. And of course, the skeleton is absolutely pivotal in human movement. So what do we mean by this well the skeleton provides what we call anchor points now when we talk about anchor points we are talking about muscles such as up here the quadricep let me do it a little bit bigger muscle group of course and it has let me bring it down a bit further and it has its tendon which inserts here on the anchor point on the tibia this is what we mean by this point anchor points We've got the notion of, have I got the same orange here? Yep, tendon insertion. Remember that we've got these muscles inserting onto the skeleton to move the skeleton via tendon, tendons. This is tendon insertion. And they operate every, of course, joint moves in terms of a circle or a part circle. So this is a model of leverage, and we're going to talk about levers in more detail in other tutorials. Now, let's keep this going. What is our fourth function of the skeleton? So. I want to talk to you about structural, structural shape, structural shape and attachment. Now, again, this relates very much to a couple of points we've made already, but let's make it in its own right. We have got this notion here of, as I've mentioned down here, tendon attachment, okay, tendon attachment from muscles onto the skeleton allowing as we've said already movement to occur so that's a really important point we've almost stressed it twice 
Now let's go a bit, let's go up to finish this off. I've just about left myself enough room here. So point five, I want to talk to you about mineral storage. And it's not the most obvious thing that you will consider when you think about the skeleton, but we should be aware of it. Minerals which are consumed within our food, they can be stored within the skeleton. So what are we talking about here? We are talking about the storage of a small quantity of calcium, which can be used for strengthening actions in the body, including of bones, of teeth, and so on. We are talking about the mineral phosphorus. Phosphorus, which is crucial for the electrical um, impulses related to things like muscle contractions, for example. And these are, both of them, are released from the skeleton into the blood. They are released into the blood and they can then be used at different sites in the body where they are required but the storage part of that is in the skeleton itself now let's finish this off with some vivid red because the last point i want to make to you is all about blood blood cell production this is in fact point six and the skeleton is responsible for blood cell production you may well be learning a little bit about this in your gcc biology if you're studying that course or your combined science but you will be learning that within particularly long bones but other types of bones as well we have bone marrow inside that bone marrow or the bone marrow itself it's there to generate white blood cells red blood cells and platelets now be careful with platelets you probably know they're the clotting agents in blood but just be careful with platelets because a platelet once it's in the blood is a cell fragment not a whole cell this is a whole cell in the blood this is a whole cell platelets are a, a cell fragment now one thing i was going to say here is that not plasma plasma is not produced in the in the skeleton it is the cells of the blood not the fluid not the water not the um, not the fluid of the blood itself so we've got support we've got protection we have got uh, movement we've got structural shape and attachment we've got mineral storage and we've got blood cell production the functions of the skeleton cheers